Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about wasting time. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what would you say is a waste of time in software development? Well, that's a pretty big question. Um, so there's a lot of things that I would say could be classified that way, uh, but I'm going to pick one thing that I think most of software developers will face at one point or another, and sort of think about it in... Uh, maybe I can help you here a little bit, because I'd like to think that I went through this journey sort of the way that most people would go through it, in many senses, I think, but the thing that I'd like to think about myself is that instead of becoming bitter, well, maybe I sound bitter sometimes, but I'm, I don't feel bitter, uh, I f found, in my opinion, a better way of doing things, or rather, at least that feels more healthy to me. And the thing that uh, usually is a waste of time is for you to uh, get frustrated and angry over that your technical vision uh, can't be done or like meets resistance or like, nobody wants to adopt it uh, in a given company. Let me explain that a little bit. So usually the way it goes for software developers is that in the beginning when they first start as a junior software developer they're scared shitless of everything and they try to just adopt whatever comes their way because their, fo their focus is usually to fit in rather than change things. And then after a little while they will start adopting opinions of their own and find ways of working that they like and so forth and so forth they will they will start to get opinionated to a certain degree right and when that starts to happen uh, some people who are very idealistic will get frustrated when they're forced into a situation where they have to work in a way that they don't want to work and this is one of those classic things where you've probably heard people talk about working for big corporations where they work like in an old outdated way etc etc or like there you have people who are incompetent because they're not using tool a b and c etc and that situation is something that is almost universally going to happen to people in it and that's where i sort of I, i've been there as well guys i've been in companies where everything sort of like it really is a shitty work environment in terms of like how we produce and there are a hundred things that we could be doing better but nobody really cares because the apathy or lethargic way of working has sort of set settled in into that work environment and this is where some software developers start to realize that the bulk of their co-workers don't actually give a shit about good software practices they're not passionate not necessarily passionate about passionate about their job they just want to basically do the thing that they have to do to get a paycheck in many cases. They, they don't have that drive to invest for a company and so forth. And that gets very frustrating for a lot of people. And the thing that I argue is a waste of time is to to actually do and do that thing, to get angry over this. Because the reality is that if you're, as an example, you're a functional person, you really think fun functional programming is the best thing, and then you go into like a company that only does object-oriented programming, and then these are your silly examples, there could be other things going on, right? Well, basically you're going to spend a lot of time getting upset and angry and trying to lobby and convince people to do work in a different way so that you can do work in a different way and my argument uh, and the thing that I'm telling you basically is that you're most likely going to waste your time this sort of it's the same thing with the, the big rewrite most companies will never give you what you need to do that and even if you get to do it a classic one that I think is interesting is that a single team in a gigantic corporation for example has the idea that they're going to work in a different way. But in order for their idea to work, and I have coworkers like that, guys, their idea crosses over to other teams. Now they have a problem because they can only affect what they do in their team, but they, in order for their idea to work, they, everybody needs to be doing it. 
and that becomes politics basically you have to convince tons and tons of other teams and people to use a different way of working and some people are really good at making these sorts of things work but in some cases guys you are dealing with people who don't give a shit they really don't and this is I only found this to ever be a waste of time to get angry and upset about this sort of stuff uh, because you're really anger is sometimes useful for certain purposes but in this scenario it, it since you can't it, it's to me it's sort of like being angry at, at you know it's like being angry at a kid who doesn't know any better doing something and like you asking yourself why is this per this the kid not smarter or more mature etc etc and the answer is usually not that they're a bad person and usually it is that they're not you know they haven't actually learned enough to be able to understand the things that you are telling them you know the classic one is a parent is trying to tell their kids you know don't do this dangerous thing because you might fall or do something something and I kinda go and say sometimes it's the right way to warn them to not do that thing and I always like uh, my friends who have kids as well they sort of say the same thing yeah but sometimes if it's something that not it's not gonna kill them you have to let them actually fall over and hurt themselves so they fucking learn instead of because they they can, you can say it a hundred times but until they actually hurt themselves they're not going to figure out that they ah, you should have listened to your mom or your dad so uh, that's the thing that i would argue is a huge waste of time the thing that i can tell you that at least i found to be really useful in scenarios like this is to stop thinking into uh, to to analyze a little bit what it is that you were trying to do basically to think about the uh, the change and w reflect a bit on why you are angry so an example would be that i once upon a time had a lot of frustration related to that my one part was that I had this hope that my coworkers would be as enthusiastic about coding as I was. Over time, I realized that that's not really happening, or that I'm not, I'm not really finding people to be that passionate. And I also found that there were better ways of doing work, but my coworkers, once again, usually didn't care so much about that. They, they weren't like interested in pushing things or like making things better and so forth and so forth. And the same thing went for the company. The company had certain priorities. And so I realized that my anger came from the fact that I saw an idealistic world. I saw how things could be better. And I felt as if these people were in my way to achieve that goal. And it's only after years of sort of being in that mind space and reflecting on it, I started to realize that what I'm actually angry over is that the th things that I am forced to deal with right now are, in my opinion, things that are not, they don't really have to be a problem because we could do things in a different way. And if we do things in a different way, these things no longer exist. But the reality is that that is sort of like dreaming of be as the world being something that it's not. In other words, what I'm saying is that you, it's sort of like, you know, for people who are really into politics and stuff like that, you can imagine as much as you want a perfect world where everybody's happy and everything is working perfectly and all you have to do is convince that other political party or like whoever is your opposition, right, that your way is better. But if you really think about it, most of the political ideas that are floating around are not going to solve all the problems because the people are still there and people have differences of opinion and they will always have differences of opinion because we have different perspectives on things. And that is the fundamental flaw with humans. At, I mean, I'm not saying it's a flaw, but that is the fundamental truth. So what you're actually upset about is usually that people are not you. People don't think and feel the same way you do. And that's frustrating to you because that means you have to deal with the scenario where you don't get your own way. And so what helped me was when I realized that the thing that I'm actually upset about is that I want the world to be something that it's not. Uh, and when I stopped trying to turn the world into like the, my vision of things, like when I was coding or my coworkers and so forth, I started looking instead at, okay, what is it like right now and what can I do with the co in, within the borders I have right now 
to make it something be a better version of what it is today not what it could be in 20 years or like in the future like in a perfect world because that fantasy world doesn't exist until I can fix this problem and so it's sort of you can almost think of it as like you're watching a timeline where you're watching at the like edge of um, of the timeline and instead of looking all the way over there you have to move yourself back to just looking right that way you are okay right here right now what could we do and so when I started thinking in those terms I started realizing that that sort of with our lesson I've had a few times where I've made that analogy guys where uh, I realized that instead of dreaming of making a skyscraper when somebody asks me to build a shed I focus instead on building the best shed that I can uh, because I know that if I do a really good job and building a really good shed I might not have gotten that perfect skyscraper but I have moved the needle towards a better future if that makes sense and that insight took a long time uh, in achieving but when I finally got it I realized that I don't really feel this tension like I'm no longer angry over the fact that my like I, I started realizing that it, it's you know, honest to God it's sort of like you spend your entire world life trying to build supercars or like really high fan performance cars versus realizing that well you know what restoring a really old car or take fixing a really old car making it run really smoothly and so forth can also be a very rewarding experience and both of these things maybe they are different inherently in terms of value but they are still moving things towards better engineering practices and if that's the thing that you care about both of these things are worth your time so what I want you to take away from this is that the thing that I argue is the biggest waste of time in software engineering is to let the anger seep in over the fact that you can't change the world into being what you want it to be. The quicker you realize that uh, in some cases you can change, fundamentally change things and uh, actually make a difference and the times there are times when you can't do that when the reality is that there is no way you can convince like you cannot as an individual f like make this thing into what you want it to be and rather than being angry over that you can't make it into exactly what you want try to figure out if you have some value that you can create with the restrictions that have been put on you within the company that you find yourself in and my uh, my my suggestion to you is to reflect on that until you might achieve well i'm not calling it enlightenment but like sort of like epiph an epiphany like myself or here's another idea if you feel that strongly about making the world a better place why would you waste your time doing that for a company who's if they want to work in a really shitty way either that's going to continue working for them or they're going to go bankrupt go and put yourself in a situation where you can be heard or where you can make a difference for things that really do actually matter because if you have all that excess energy, don't put it on some people who might not even give you a salary bump or like even reward you for putting all that energy into their company. Go and put it towards bettering something that really matters. Go and join a cause, like start being an activist, etc., etc. There's tons of people, guys, who have this drive to make the world into a better place and they're in it for the long haul. And that sort of energy is required sometimes and the backing and like the numbers and so forth to make some things happen and some things will take generations to achieve and the question is are you really going to spend that time on trying to get func object oriented people to use functional programming it seems like a lot of work where you could have gone you, you, you know there are other things you could be doing in my opinion have a great day